Hi, I'm Christopher Whitaker with uh, Smart Chicago Collaborative and the Code for America Brigade Captain for Chicago. I'm here with Greg from Twilio, who's going to show us the Twilio app and how you can use it to help build your civic apps. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm with Twilio. Twilio makes it easy to, for developers to send and receive text messages and place and receive phone calls uh, from within their apps, whether they're mobile apps or web apps. Um, so what I'm going to do is just walk through what it looks like to buy a phone number and then to receive a text message with that phone number and then to place a phone call with that number. So uh, we're here on Twilio's homepage. Uh, I'm already signed in, uh, but you can create an account and you can create an account for free and it's going to give you $30 in free credit uh, in order just to, or maybe I think it's $20 in free credit just to play around with. So, um, and the first thing you're going to want to do is get a phone number. And we're here in Chicago, so I'm going to look for a 773 phone number. And here we have one. So I'm going to buy this number. It costs a dollar uh, a month in order to have a phone number. So it says, congratulations, you've purchased this number. So if you want to go ahead and, and punch that number into your phone, okay. and I'll read it off to you here while I set it up. It's 773-570-3218. All right. All right. So the way that Twilio is going to work here is that... Thanks uh, for the call. OK. Configure your number's voice you are now to change this message. Awesome. So the number is active, and now I need to come in here and set up um, basically the tell Twilio what I want it to do whenever someone calls that phone number okay. or sends a text to that number. Um, so I have a server set up. It's running on my machine right now. And that server is accessible at uh, this URL here, okay. uh, twiliodemo.ingrock.com. And so I want to put in two endpoints here, one for the voice and one for the SMS. And the way this works is that when you call this number or when you um, send a, a text message to this number, Twilio then makes an HTTP request to my server. Um, and just like with a, any HTTP request that say a browser would make, it's going to pass certain parameters to there. And included in those parameters are going to be things like your phone number and the body of the text message. And then just like HTTP requests, it's going to expect a response back. And so we're going to send a response back using XML or uh, a special you know, Twilio formatted XML, which we cleverly called Twimmel. Um, and it's quite simple and just basically says, this is what I want you to do after we receive this text message. So first, let's just look at doing a text. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. Uh, so what this will do is that when I text this phone number, I'm actually te texting your computer program. Correct. Yeah, okay. exactly. Um, so I'm just going to have it do. So basically what this is going to do is, is you're texting that number. It's hitting the Twilio server. And then that Twilio server, because I configured that endpoint, is hitting my computer. And then my computer is just basically sending back this XML that just says, send this. Um, send this text message back. So try it, try that, try sending a text okay. to that number. And we'll see what happens there. Okay, so I'm sending it. Okay. And well, I got something back and, right away. And you got something back, awesome. Um, if we click over here to my server, we can see that, um, that, you know, that an HTTP request was made. Actually, let's do this. Let's see if we can see what the information is that comes in uh, when this actually happens here. So I want to do, puts params. And I'm going to click back over here to my server. And clear screen, send me a text again. And we'll see what information Twilio actually passes to my server. And so you can see almost immediately after you hit send, I get back all this information about um, the, uh, you know, has your phone number in there, it has um, the, uh, the from number, the to number, all that good stuff. So now what I want to do is I want to go in here and Let's take a look at um, the information that was actually stored there on the server. Okay. Um, so we'll come, and I've just loaded up IRB, which is just a, uh, you know, the Ruby console. And I'm just going to load up the information here, uh, or like this actual file. And I want to do a Twilio client. And I'm going to 
passed to that, my account information. So now I have my client, and I want to take a look at all the messages that have been sent to this phone number. Okay. So I say messages list, and I want to look at. Let's go grab that number again. So here it is here. So what are all the text messages that were sent to that phone number? And what I'm going to do is take those and actually store them just into a variable called messages. Now if we take a look at that. You can see there's a couple messages, but that doesn't really oh. tell me a whole lot. Um, so let's actually go through and we'll iterate through that array. And for each one of those messages, I'm going to put out the body of the message that was sent. So here we go. Again, hi there. So that's the text of each message. Now I want to take, I want to look at all the phone numbers. So I'll say messages.collect. And take a look at the from number for each one of those numbers that went through. And if we do that, we can see that you sent me uh, a number and you sent it twice. I just want to get a unique, just unique numbers here. So now I just have your one. Oh, uh, okay. Because okay. um, what I want to do now is I want to place a phone call. I want to have Twilio call you. And when it calls you, what's going to happen is it's going to place a call. And then you're going to pick up. And then Twilio is going to say, OK, what do I do? And so it's going to look to, um, uh, it's going to, look to uh, my server here and say, well, what should I be doing now? Um, and so what I want to do then is just tell Twilio that, I, you know what, actually, I won't worry about dialing. I'm just going to say, say I'm going to say hello there, like that. So I can sit, put in those messages anything I need to say. Yeah, anything. Yeah, and it will read to you. It will. You can also uh, have it play songs. You can put in oh, MP3s. Wow. You can, you know, when Twilio first started, the way that they launched it was Jeff, our uh, CEO, built an app that Rick rolled people, uh, <laughs> and so it, it would call them and it would, it would play uh, Rick Astley there, um, and nice. that's actually how they ended up raising some of their first rounds nice. of venture capital is by building this app that Rick rolled people. So. Um, so yeah, let's see if we can get my client here that I have to place a phone call. So uh, I have my numbers, right? Um, okay, there's your phone number right there. <laughs> and so I want to do client.account.calls.create. And I want the to just to be your number. And I want the from to be my Twilio phone number. And then I need to give it a URL and say basically, once you pick up the phone, where do I want Twilio to look to for information about what it's supposed to do? And it's just that same uh, URL that I had from before. Okay. Now, only this time, I'm hitting the call URL instead of the SMS. Oh, uh, okay. okay. So we'll hit that. It goes off, and uh, hopefully your phone rings here in a second. There we go. And put it on speaker when you answer it. Let's see what happens. I missed it. I mean, it said hello there. It did. Uh, we can actually, here, let's do this. Um, I think we can do loop equals five. Try. So I'm going to call you again. And then we'll make sure that, that you hear the. An application oh, error. I killed it. Oh, whoops. Goodbye. Uh -oh. oh, I know what it did. I know what it did. All right. We'll try this one more time. You gotta escape those quotation marks in your XML. Hello. Hello. Hello there. Hello there. Hello there. Hello there. And that's it. That's how you. That is awesome. Buy a phone number, send and receive text messages, place and receive phone calls. Five minutes. You're up and running. That is awesome. Cool. So, what are some examples of things that people have done with Twilio? Yeah. So, if you use Uber. Um, and you get a text message and it says, hey, your cab's almost there, or your driver's on the way, or your driver's arrived. All of that's powered off of Twilio. Okay. Um, Obama for America campaign, uh, 
department here in Chicago use Twilio to send out text messages to remind people to vote on election day. Um, people build pretty sophisticated call centers. Obama for America did the same thing, built a, uh, I think it was the National Voter Fraud Hotline. Um, and so they had a call center where you can call in and, you know, it's like press one to do this, press two to do this, and route people like calls. And the cool thing is that before Twilio, if you wanted to build, say, a call center, you needed a closet full of hardware and it might cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars to get it set up and it was going to stay the same from the first day it arrived on premise to the day you threw it out. Right. But now what Twilio's done is it's taken all that infrastructure and it's moved it all in the cloud. So now for a couple bucks and you know a few minutes of a developer's time you can push out an MVP of a product, say a phone product or whatnot, and then you can iterate very rapidly on it, respond to customers and change it. Um, and so that's why startups like uh, Uber or say a startup like the Obama campaign uses this stuff because it lets you move very quickly and very cheaply and then respond uh, as, you, as it gets out there in the world. That is great. So what are some of the advantages of using you know, text messaging versus like email? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, text messaging is about the most intimate form of electronic communication that we have today. Um, let's just let's work our way backwards. Say that you, I follow you on Twitter. If you tweet, I may or may not see it. Um, I might, I might not see it. Depends on if I'm checking Twitter. If you send me an email, I will see it. I will read everything that comes in my inbox. I, but I might take my time to get around to it. If you send me a text message, I will look at it right then and there. Probably even if I'm out to dinner with my wife, much to her chagrin, right? <laughs> like, like anything that shows up in your, in your SMS uh, inbox, your people just look at. It. Like, it, and think about the people that you tend to text message with. Like, it's the people closest to you. Like, it Makes is, sense. yeah, and it, and it's for things that are important and often urgent. Um, so it really gives you direct access to people, so long as you don't abuse that privilege. Right. Um, which is why Uber, when they won't need to get a hold of you right now to tell you your cab's there, as opposed to five minutes from now, they send you a text message instead of an email. Makes sense. So awesome. Is there anything I missed? Or uh, if I'm you know, at National Day of Civic Hacking and kind of want to get some more information, where would I go? Yeah, go to Twilio.com. We've got great docs. Um, and I, I'd say that for National Day of Civic Hacking, um, we're talking to Dan O'Neill, uh, Smart Chicago Collaborative, uh, last week. And he said that they love text messages because what the Smart Chicago Collaborative is trying to do yeah. is build the least amount of software to deliver the most value to people. And he said he loves text messaging because it is such little software you can write to reach people, to reach people who don't have smartphones, um, and, and to give people a way to interact with your software without building this overwrought uh, interface or having people love in or whatnot, you know, literally just in a couple minutes, you give someone a phone number, they can be interacting with your software. Awesome. Um, so it's a great way just to reach lots and lots of people um, where they are, you know, without having to require them to, to sign in, to, to sit down at a computer. Right then and there, as they're out in the world, you can get them to interact with your software and serve them in interesting ways. That's awesome. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah.